um, and at the right times. At PwC, we have been focused on the SDGs for over three years. We saw them coming. We thought they were going to be important. I think we're right. And so we're also delighted um, that we're the knowledge partner for this event. This event follows in the footsteps of a similar event, which is now in its sixth year, held in Singapore each November. I applaud global initiatives to have the, br the, the vision to bring this event here to Africa. And I applaud all of you for making the effort to be here. I mean, look at, look at it. We have over 400 registrations already for this event, which to put it into context, in Singapore after six years, we had 790 registrations last year. But 420 for the first event is fantastic. And Tony, looking at this, I think next year, you're gonna need a bigger room. <laughs> we have a fantastic lineup of speakers and breakout sessions over the next two days. It is going to be information overload. So pay attention, take notes, ask questions, <coughs> learn from the speakers, learn from participants alike. I can honestly say that I think the RBF has the best SDG focus conference agenda and best lineup of speakers by quite a long way. So take the most of it. Right, let's get going. To kick us off, we have two short presentations to get some high-level governmental perspectives um, as to what's going on here. Until yesterday afternoon, we were hoping and planning on the attendance of Minister Radebe, the Minister in the Presidency for Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, and Chairperson of the National Planning Commission. Unfortunately and disappointingly for us, until just yesterday evening, he was called to meet the President this morning and so couldn't quite make it here, and he is hugely apologetic for that. But I have to tell you, I'm extremely impressed and grateful that last night he managed to find the time to record his presentation for us um, so we could hear what he was going to say from him personally. So if we could roll um, Minister Radebe's video, please. I hope. Are we good? Thank you. Mr. Lamin Mane, Director, Regional Service Center for Africa, UNDP. Mr. Vali Musa, my former cabinet colleague and now chairman of the Sun International and WWF South Africa. Dr. Hanina Hakima El Haite, Special Envoy for Climate Change, Kingdom of Morocco and Global Climate Action Champion, UNFCCC. Mr. Kes Kovadia, Chairman of the National Business Initiative and Managing Director, Banking Association of South Africa. Honored guests, CEOs, leaders, activists, and everyone gathered here today. Thank you for inviting me to address this opening plenary of the Responsible Business Forum on Sustainable Development, headlined with the theme, Accelerating Inclusive Growth to Deliver the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm sure that I do not need to remind all of you who are gathered here today at a very critical time in the evolution of our history as a people, wherever we may find ourselves across the globe. And indeed, accelerating inclusive growth to deliver on the United Nations Agenda 2030 and the SDGs must be at the center of our deliberations and actions. This is both critical and urgent. What we think, what we plan, and how we respond with decisive actions to address these almost intractable plights and challenges that face us in South Africa, in Africa and across the globe, will be defining features of our deliberations here in Johannesburg over the next two days. Our world, just like here in South Africa and Africa, are looking for new answers, for better transitions, and for sharper, higher impact outcomes. And so it is that all of us here today must serve to fashion a sharper message of hope, a more convincing response of action, and signal our responsiveness, mindful and eminently aware of that better world we so desperately desire and which we promised. It's about establishing virtuous circles, 
for development in our respective spheres. Let me hasten to add, the discourse today cannot merely be that it is government problem alone. This is why I feel so exceedingly privileged and pleased to be here today to evidence in person my unreserved commitment and that of my country at the highest possible level and share some thoughts for your consideration. Africa is built as a strategic framework for the socio-economic transformation of the continent over the next 50 years. Building on programs including the LACOS plan of action, it is meant to be a comprehensive plan of action for Africa to position herself as a player in global affairs and strengthen intercontinental relations. Allow me to underline this important fact. It is about building lasting, meaningful, and effective partnerships in responding to our aspirational national development plan, our Agenda 2063, and the SDGs. Critically, it is partnerships that lay waste to what our emerging as false dichotomies between us in government and them, the private sector. The challenge for our time is to find truth amid humanity's infinite complexity and contradictions. All know too well that the SDGs were created to transform this world. And for the goals to be reached, governments, the private sector, and civil society need to work together. Since the launch of the SDGs, we now have an unprecedented opportunity to accelerate inclusive growth in our country and Africa, to deliver the goals and bring countries, businesses, and people together to embark on a new path towards a more sustainable, better planet for all of us. Welcome, and I'm very pleased to note that the Responsible Business Forum will examine each of the 17 SDGs in depth with case studies and perspectives from businesses, governments, United Nations agencies and NGOs, investors, and international experts. This will serve to guide companies to concretely contribute to achieving the goals through inclusive growth. What does the landscape look like today, two years since the coming into existence of the SDGs? And I was there in New York in 2015 when it was launched. I would argue that the picture that is emerging very early on is mixed. Globalization, technological progress, and our own interconnectedness have dramatically increased global trade, global wealth, as well as global progress. It is true that the number of absolute poor has been reduced and that living conditions have improved all over the world. The very same instruments of our progress has arguably also been factors of increased inequality, poverty, and unemployment. I recently read a staggering fact. Eight persons in the world have as much wealth as the half of the world population. So people are still being left behind. Gender inequality, especially affecting our women and youth unemployment has become a more critical problem in different regions of our world, and particularly so in South Africa and Africa. This is not only undermining the future of our young people, but it also serves as an obstacle to the development of our countries. We need forums like this one to share some new answers. We also need to be able to overcome a deficit of trust and of confidence on both sides of the divide, government and business. South Africa's main challenge has to do with the rolling back of poverty, unemployment and inequality. Our NDP Vision 2030 advocates for the living standards of the poor to be raised to a minimum level. And for this to be achieved, our country has to create the jobs in order to have the majority of our people in employment, particularly women 
who are mostly affected by poverty. Increased levels of income through productivity growth, a social wage, and good quality public services of these challenges are intertwined. For instance, improved education will lead to higher employment and earnings, while more rapid economic growth will broaden opportunities for all and generating the resources required to improve education. Our NTP Vision 2030 presents a long-term strategy to increase employment and broaden opportunities through education, vocational training and work experience, public employment programs, health and nutrition, public transport and access to information. While there are quick wins to be achieved in each of these areas, the strategies will take time to have a large-scale effect on poverty. Of the key issues underpinning both the NDP and the SDGs is the necessity for an integrated approach to development that incorporates all sectors of our society and fosters a mindset and behavioral shift of ownership and agency. There is no shortcut to good development. It takes time. It takes investment. It takes collective action. These ideas of inclusive growth are gaining traction in many parts of our world. And it implies that developing an economy that works for all, not just a select few. And also sequencing prosperity and fairness requires crafting together different values and realities that underpin efficiency and social justice. The principle of participation in the form of active citizenship must be the heartbeat of inclusive development. It gives our people agency, dignity, a stake in the development of their own country. It also means enhancing skills, capabilities, and capabilities for our people to generate an income through employment or by running their own businesses, be they small or big. Growth must therefore be a defining collective endeavor involving government, business, labor, and civil society recognizing our shared destinies. The SDGs, in my opinion, gives us the opportunity to collaborate more sharply, more effectively, and more deliberately because it is an agenda that aims at leaving no stone and no one behind, eradicating poverty and creating conditions for people to trust again in not only political systems, but also in multilateral forums of governance and international organizations such as the United Nations, the African Union, and our own various national networks. We cannot ignore the fact that we are facing a fourth industrial revolution that will have a dramatic impact in South Africa and Africa. And this will be a problem for many developing countries that today rely on cheap labor as their competitive advantage. And cheap labor will probably see many jobs destroyed in the near future with robotics and other forms of automation. Your deliberations today too must anticipate these trends. We need to be able to work together more prodigiously, not reactively, but proactively to know what is coming and investing in education, in training, in new skills, in the adaptations of countries to ensure that we'll be able to cope with the challenges of the future. The 2030 agenda is without doubt our boldest agenda for achieving human progress. This colossal effort is not about individual people. It's not about governments, business and organizations alone. It is about what we can do and must do together to better support all efforts in implementing such a boldly transformative agenda. It falls upon all of us to reflect on whether we are able to hold back by insufficient collaboration, coordination, and accountability on systems-wide activities. There may often be good reasons why things are the way they are. 
but change for the better sooner rather than later we must. Perhaps too much of what we have been doing is rooted in the past instead of being linked to the future that we want as stated in our Agenda 2030. Agenda 2063 and the National Development Plan, our master plans, all chart the pathways and has to be given that life as the defining agenda of our times because it is the preeminent integrated platform to respond to the needs of our people and our governments across the globe. This, in my view of necessity, means asking some deep and difficult questions about resources, about structures, about skill sets, and the current architecture for action. This remains our collective responsibility. After all, sustainable development is pivotal to the lives of every person everywhere. It is a means to improve the lives of people, of communities, of societies without harming our planet, and the root to advancing the realization of economic, cultural, social, and political rights for all. Many people suffer most from poverty and exclusion. Those who have been left behind and who have no access to development, to peace, or to respect for their rights and dignity look to us here in this room with hope to help better their lives. We cannot and dare not fail them. I remain convinced that together, all of us can take the necessary steps that are required and that humanity also deserves. I await a report of your deliberations with eager, with anticipation, and I wish you all, all of the best, and I thank you. I think that leaves us in absolutely no uncertain terms where the uh, South African government sits on this agenda. Um, I like how the minister finished there, cannot and dare not fail the people. And he also, near the beginning of his speech, talked about decisive actions and convincing actions and looking for what comes from this conference as to what we're going to debate and what we're going to discuss that we can feed back um, to the government around the things that we think maybe could help move this agenda forward. Uh, so a lot of food for thought in that, and I think I might watch it again later because there was so much good stuff in it.